right now what I'd like to invite over are two cool guests. They do production, lots of different types of stuff for different walks of life. So I'd love to have, oh, excuse me. Yeah, let's bring them over. Come on, guys. I'm sorry. I jumped our schedule. But that's what live is for, right? We just go with it. Uh, so thank you for putting up with me. I am not a professional host, nor do I pretend to be. Um, but neither are these guys. I'm going to give one mic to you. But what you guys are professionals at are going live and taking your clients live from pretty much anywhere. So I'd like to introduce Brian Scheel. And we've got... Uh, Todd, I just spaced on your Mason. last, Mason, I knew that, oh my goodness, from Broadcast Management Group. Um, so there they are, say hi guys. Hi. <laughs> uh, so man, Brian. Claudia, <laughs> you can talk, man. Is this that girl that, wait, was that a compliment stop, or not? That, that is a compliment. All right, I gotta be careful. Man, how long have you been here? This girl hasn't taken a breath, people. Woo, can we get a drink? Claudia? Well, that's why I'm glad you guys are here because you can start talking because you wow. guys actually have a lot more knowledge and experience that I could ever My hope head to is have. going like <laughs> this. It's like that's a lot of information you yeah. just let out there. Well, I, I, we do want to hear what you guys have to say because I think when I look at the different types of clients and the different types of jobs that you do, it really does blow my mind. And I think it's, it's not always the big, 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 most expensive projects that are, let's say, the most exciting. Sometimes it is the smaller, lower budget projects that can be just as interesting or you get to experiment. I know you've done a lot of cool stuff with big companies, but done sort of more avant-garde things like with VR, um, different things that like Comic-Con, you name it. Lots of cool entertainment venues going live from all over the place. Uh -huh. And I don't know if you want to share a little bit about that, well, what I, that craziness looks oh, like. I, I'd love to. And thank you, Live View. Thank you for having us here. And it's great to meet Ben and Chris and Ari over there and, and Claudia and Joyce, thank you, thank you very much. Um, yeah, we did Comic-Con, I just told Ari that we did Comic-Con at uh, 360 mm -hmm. live using the data bridge mode, which was great. Uh, and there's been some updates even since then, so it's great. We do a lot of stuff with uh, NBC, uh, America's Got Talent, and The Voice. Mm -hmm. We won't do a show without the live unit. Uh, that's good to hear. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, it's good to hear that it's it's a, a true support and well, backbone. And it's been the primary source of internet on three live episodes, one for The Voice and two for America's Got Talent this year. Our, our not only our primary, our our only. That's crazy. <laughs> only that's yeah. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do want to come back though when you talk about 360. Do you see more and more customers asking for that or looking for it? Uh, is it just an interesting? I don't want to say gimmick, but an augment to a broadcast or... I think you have to have the right scope of work. Mm -hmm. I'm doing something this weekend uh, for, for Kohl's in, in Los Angeles, California. And it's, it's a yoga class. And it's a full-blown stream with a truck and six cameras and a giant jib and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And they said, hey, let's do, I've been wanting to do an exercise class for obvious reasons, but... <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I did a, I did a sit-up yesterday. New Year's resolutions. Yeah, We're in Vegas. <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah, okay. right? Forget <laughs> it. Forget it. And, you know, I think that's the perfect uh, usage for a 360, an exercise class. You can see how other people are mm -hmm. working out, um, or even like a Taekwondo class, like that kind right. of stuff. And so Coles said, hey, why don't we finally do that 360 thing you've been talking about, and uh, we're going to go live with it. And, um, you know, so it's all in the usage. Right. We did Comic-Con live for uh, – for uh, Comedy Central, mm -hmm. uh, to, I'm spacing on the name of the show. What is it? Broad Street, Broad, Broad City, Broad City. Thank you, <laughs> Broad City. We did their activation at Comic Con, so that that was great. Lots of colors and uh, drawings and things. So very cool. Yeah. Now you mentioned brands though doing live, and you know, and I actually want to uh, bring Todd into this too because I think Todd, you also work with a lot of more, let's say, alternative customers that or brands or corporate that are also getting into live and that that's a growing market as well yeah it really it really is I mean we've been working with live view for a, a number of years now and thrilled with the progression of live view and my favorite tool in the live view toolbox is the LU 200 mm -hmm. uh, often when we use it it's you know a hard line internet connection 
Um, we've used it uh, the, for Mashable. We did three days of shows at uh, South by Southwest, and that's how we were able to stream to Twitter is we use uh, LU200. We also had a couple of LU500s at the time for uh, field, you know, uh, had crews around mm -hmm. um, uh, South by Southwest. Um, we do, uh, in addition to all the live shows that we do, um, we also do a lot of consulting, and particularly in the OTT space. And uh, corporate is just getting into OTT, and it's a great application. One uh, national financial network that we just built an OTT channel and built the, uh, the network headquarters in Chicago, studios, control rooms, all of that. But we needed a number of remote locations to, in the daily show. So we're producing right now uh, seven hours a day of live shows Monday through Friday and so we bring in these remotes we have live view units uh, LU 200s at each of the locations and then we have the, the course the receiver in Chicago and it works fantastic so they're basically pulling in the live remote feed into yep. the receiver in Chicago doing yep. all the production Integrating right there into the whole show so in yeah. essence it is like an at-home production type of an environment you're just throwing a unit out into the field with the camera to capture whether it's a guest or uh, some in the field action and they're able to cut to it in real time yeah, that's, absolutely. That's, that's and awesome. um, one thing that we have coming up that we're going to be using um, uh, Live View also for is the Oscars. We're working with IMDb, and we're going to have uh, our correspondent on the red carpet, and we'll bring that back through an LU200 uh, to the pr truck and integrate it into the whole broadcast. And, and I think that's interesting to say, too. The LU200 is actually a similar form factor yeah. to the Live View solo unit. Uh, what it has, though, is our two additional internal modems. So you can have up to four, uh, connect, four cellular connections and Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Um, but when you talk about something like the Oscars, where there is a ton of stuff happening, yeah. and if you ever got a chance to pan behind the scenes at that red carpet, it is worse than the mess of wires than we have here. It is cables and trucks and routers and wires and everything uh, for everyone trying to broadcast. So being able to maneuver around right. with a very small pack in your camera even helps get some of the better shots or some of the better angles in a, in a place where everyone's fighting for almost the same content. That's right. Uh, so, so you had mentioned that you had, because you had internet access, you're, yeah. not, you're not plugging the 200 in. Yeah. You're, you're using the 200 with 200. the cell. Uh, no, I'm using uh, I'm using the Ethernet. He's oh, using, using the Ethernet, Ethernet. Yeah. so, so basically as an, as, as an encoder. encoder. That's mm -hmm. right, an encoder. Exactly. Yeah. But you have the server exactly. at yeah. the truck. Yeah. So the service at the truck. Yeah, yeah, and we could great. have you know multiple locations. We have another project that we're working on in similar situation. We'll have multiple locations all coming back to the truck. Um, one other thing we did interesting at, at Sundance was with uh, Amazon. And we, um, uh, we had a five-camera shoot. Uh, we couldn't get a truck in there, so we um, we subswitched the cameras uh, at Sundance, and then we uh, sent it back to a control room in New York, where we did all right. the playback yeah. and the graphics. And that worked great. I think we do. We have a question about this from someone. Did, is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, we do have a question. Um, the question is from Daniel Wright, who asks, "Does the Live View Solo need to use cellular data? Can you connect it uh, any other way to the internet?" So uh -huh. all of all of our devices uh, do not need just cellular they all can take ethernet and wi-fi in addition to it some of our other packs because of that ethernet you actually can even bond in a right. satellite and there are some unique situations where that comes in handy all of that does is you know you want to have more than one connection because basically that creates a more robust and stronger signal it creates a fat connection so the more you add the more robust that signal is now there does come a point where you're not you won't really need all that bandwidth in order to get a great quality signal out. You don't necessarily need, you know, 120 megabits per second. You know, nor would you want to spend that amount in data. Um, and but the beauty part about whether it's Live View Solo or any of the other products our guests are talking about is that uh, our encoder talks. Uh, it talks. Uh, excuse me. Our algorithm talks directly to the encoder. So we're sensing that bandwidth. So the point is not just when you're static. When you're moving around, that will fluctuate. So as you're moving around, we can ramp up and ramp down the bit rate dynamically on the fly so that you will never lose that stream. It'll be a very slow reduction in quality as it ramps down. The second it recognizes the bandwidth has increased again, it will ramp it back up. So to the end audience, all they're seeing is a great continuous stream as you're walking around. When we did the same solution for the Pride Parade in yeah. New York City two years ago for, for Netflix, we yeah. did this. We had the uh, LU2000 server right. in a... Airbnb, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a 
along Fifth Avenue, and yeah. here I am on a float. I'm on the yeah. Netflix float with my TriCaster. Thank you, New Tech. Um, and I'm going down with the Orange is the New Black cast, and we're switching cameras with the TriCaster. I had the LU500 at the yeah. time with the extender on yeah. the roof, and then I had a Digero box, I had a TVU, and I had something called the... Uh, doesn't matter. It, did, it didn't they're work. Not even, they're not it even, didn't they're, they're, work. The name of the story is the only one that did not let me down yeah. was was the live view. Yeah. The live view was solid. I had all the broadcasts there, and I could switch to it, and I had to watch, you know, what's giving me trouble, what's going – and all the others were just crap. Because you're, you're going down Fifth Avenue in the Pride Parade surrounded by people that are constantly tweeting, and they're right. all, you know, phones everywhere. And we killed it. I mean, the live view did yeah. not drop once, and everything else was – it didn't work at all. Yeah, no. so now you don't bother bringing those other... Oh, never. No, okay. no, 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 no. no. It's, <laughs> it's not around. Oh, yeah. so. it's, well, it's not around. Right, right, right. Some yeah. of them are, are not uh, around. Yeah, but yeah. that is uh, the uh, the great thing about Live View is it allows you to get into places where you can't get a truck. Right. You know, even if you wanted a truck, you can't get a truck. So it makes a lot of things possible that wouldn't have been a few years ago. Yeah, we, we're seeing that now with uh, a lot of theater productions where the infrastructure is this big, beautiful theater, yep. but it's old. Right. There is no infrastructure, and you can't even get a truck up to it in some of the metropolitan areas. So being able to, when you have to go down into the bowels, which is what people want to see, they want to see the production, but they want to see people getting ready. They want to see yeah. the green room. They want to see the actors coming in before, during, and after. That's engaging content right. for an audience. Uh, there's no way to do that unless you had some type of wireless yep. ability, capabilities. Yeah. So this yeah. is super exciting stuff, guys. Uh, I know that there's questions, and I think you guys are really well suited to ask them. So I'm going to go to Joyce really quickly and see hey. what questions we've got. We've got lots of questions, a lot of them related to cameras. So we'll start with which you know DSLR or professional ca video camera. Um, you know, what's the best for live streaming? So we can ask this of our guys here, but I'm sure you have a plethora of different types of cameras that you do depending on the shoot. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of good camera options out there. Um, I think, you know, with shooting and, you know, if you shoot, you know, 1080p uh, 60, you know, that's great. You know, that's what our preference is for everything we uh, do. But the cameras, there are a lot of good options. So. I'm all over the map. I let the yeah. client pick the camera and the lens, and um, yeah. you know, I, I own C300s. I, I own even my Sony EX3s are still killing it, and uh, you know, I, I love the camera. And I got C300s. I got F, FS700s that are still in use. You put good glass on it, and it looks great. Yeah. Joyce, I don't know if there's anybody back there that actually does some live streaming that wants to comment. I don't know if Nick is hanging out over there or anybody. That has a comment about a camera that they're liking right now. No. Let's bring Ari in. Ari. <laughs> Ari has no opinion. HEVC, -E <laughs> Ari. Let's talk HEVC. Come on. And uh, so, every a couple other people want to know best 360 camera for streaming. Oh, that, that's that's a tough one, Joyce. So you know, I mean, we we've we at Live View have played around with a lot of 360 cameras and whatnot. <laughs> the one thing that I can say about uh, 360 so far is you really have to make sure that you're using a 4K camera. Um, because what happens is when you take that 360 image and then actually make a viewing portal, you're taking only a very small component of that 360 image. So if you don't have a 4K raster, you don't have enough data there. And so what you end up with, with you know, for example, a 1080 signal is this you know, 320 by 240 little tiny box, and so the resolution is very, very low. And so we very much suggest that if you're looking into 4K cameras, uh, excuse me, into 360 cameras, yeah. you know, definitely take a look at, um, at the 4K options, because uh, those are going to be stronger. And with our uh, LU600 HEVC platform, uh, which can handle uh, 4K with the 4K HEVC card, uh, now we can actually stream that 4K video at you know a, a very decent bit rate, and it's going to look excellent as you uh, send that off to the cloud provider. So Ben and I took a stroll down to the uh, Las Vegas Convention Center's um, Central Hall, and the the big buzz down there was 5G wireless. So how's Live View taking advantage of that? Oh, that's that's another really good question, Joy. So. Um, the fifth generation wireless uh, networks are, are really just starting to uh, you know, pop up in metro markets for testing and whatnot. So what we're starting to see with fifth generation is, is massive amounts of bandwidth. 
Um, but the thing that fifth generation doesn't buy you is that added resiliency. So w we imagine that we're going to see a, a trend toward 5G over the next you know, four or five years. Um, and you know, our, our modular modems will just replace the, the current 4G modems that are in there. And we'll start using uh, 5G modems instead. Um, and, and at that point, you'll have a lot of bandwidth. And you spread that across you know, the four major carriers in the United States. And now you have resiliency as well. So it, it just probably means that you're going to need less modems. Uh, you're going to need less bandwidth with the HEVC optimizations, uh, but you know, 5G I think is going to be uh, really exciting, and, and we're already working with the technology and standards as we uh, as we head into uh, 2018. Sister Joyce, are there any questions for our guests right now uh, on the line? No. No. Never All right, we're going to come back to them <laughs> and let them keep going because I was kind of digging what we were starting to get into there a little bit with some of the projects. Yes, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> when you get the HEVC upgrade in the 600, do you have to engage that encoding or it's it's HEVC now forever? So, uh, the HEVC encoder that we've uh, picked up basically can do both 264 and 265. Uh, and so that really primarily for us is important with uh, the store and forward functionality, right? Because a, a lot of editors today can't quite accept HEVC as a, as a codec for edit. So what we're seeing is, you know, H.264 would be your capture format uh, when doing store and forward, but you'd still stream HEVC for live and, and get the bandwidth savings and the reliability uh, savings as well. Thank you. Very cool. Well, I, I really am glad that you guys joined us here tonight, and I do want you to stick around, too, because I think when we get into the Q&A, we can answer. As you know, Chris can answer pretty much any question that's coming through, but it's better to hear even what's happening from the field and kind of that experience as well. So I want to say thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, thank you and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll stick around because we want to do some Q&A at the end.